Hi. So once again, a very good evening to fellow Toastmasters and thank you so much for fellow members for attending this workshop. I would say that it's an education session. So give me a thumbs up if you can hear my voice clearly. Yes, thank you. So first of all, thank you so much for members attending this workshop and also thank you Ian for giving me this opportunity to share with you guys on ways to craft speeches. So today's material, I take, I'm, I'm taking the materials from Toastmasters International Better Speaker Series and also a combination of my personal experience for seven years in Toastmasters. I have been observing more than 100 of speeches and been observing district speakers on how they craft their speeches. So today we also have few senior members joining this uh, sharing and it will serve as a refresher for you to craft your speeches and also serve as a guideline for our fellow new members to craft your future speeches. So without further delay, I will shall start my speech. And in between my speech uh, disclaimer, I will quote certain members' speech that you have already presented in the previous meeting because I find it uh, more relatable. Uh, please do not feel offended or it's just a reference in order for us to dive in better in this topic. So don't be so surprised if I suddenly mention your name. So first thing first, I would like to mention this just at the beginning, the steps to prepare a speech. So this is very important because once you have already informed the VPE that you are going to present a speech, first thing that you got to do is to go to your base camp and read the project manual, download the project manual and also the evaluation form. If you are still a new member and you do not have idea where to download, please refer to your mentor or your or our VPE because all the project requirements is already written in the project manual. So please remember to read your project manual and also together send the project manual and also the evaluation resources to your evaluator before you deliver your speech in the club. Because I want to highlight this is because I realize that most evaluator they only read the evaluation resource. However, they have no idea what they are going to evaluate in that particular project. So remember to do this while you are going to deliver a speech. So next, you will select a topic, you will create an outline, you will continue to write a speech, you will practice, you will apply vocal variety and also your body language. And finally, this is your stage time. So once again, this is to help you to differentiate the project manual on the left side this is a project manual is around 20 to 30 pages and the right side this is the evaluation resource that you have to send to your evaluator okay so give me a thumbs up and promise me that you will do so in your future meetings when you are going to deliver a speech okay great thank you and now first thing first when you are going to write a speech i want everyone to set your mindset right other than reading your purpose statement, which is something that you're going to fulfill for that particular project, the next thing that I want you to realize and to get clear is that what is the purpose of the speech? Basically, there are four purposes of the speech. It is either to entertain, to inform, to persuade, or to inspire. So, the reason why you have to get clear the purpose of the speech is because it will help you to maintain a clear sense of why you are writing the speech. So let's say, for example, to entertain. To entertain doesn't mean that to be a very humorous speech. To entertain meaning that you make people feel relaxed, happy, enjoy, or even laugh. So in level three onwards, there is a project done by Daniel, something like social speeches, like giving a toast, giving an acceptance speech. Those could be considered as entertaining speeches. So in order for you to achieve the purpose of entertaining people, you need to know that you have to include like funny jokes, anecdotes or stories in order to entertain people. To inform people on a certain topic, you have to rely heavily on facts, statistics, data, or even charts, presentation, visuals. To persuade people, you are going to change people's views, point, or mindset on something. You need emotions, you need logics, you need ethics to persuade people. 
And finally, to inspire people, of course, you need emotions and anecdotes. So it will help you to craft and write your speech. So first thing first, after you get clear your purpose statement, get to know what is the purpose of your speech. It's either one of these four. So next, after you have identified what is the purpose of your speech, the next would be you are going to select a topic. So what is your topic? And you have to be very clear as in what is the core message that you are going to deliver to your audience. So you are sharing a topic of your interest and this is something that you wanted to share, but what do you want to share? And is that something your audience is hoping to hear from you? And what do you want them to do or feel after listening to your speech? So let's say there is a speech by Mr. Benka talking about vaccine and he told us about the benefits of vaccine and Mr. Wenka wants us to take an action to be vaccinated as soon as possible. That is a call to action and also the core message that he wanted to deliver in the speech. So think of your core message. As you know, we as a speaker, sometimes we are, most of the time, we are an audience. So think from the audience perspective. Audience coming in to hear you for speaking for seven minutes and we are expecting something from you. So try to think what can you give to the audience, the take-home message or even the call to action. What is your core message? So first thing first, get your core message and also your purpose. So show me a thumbs up if you are clear about this topic, uh, the slide at the moment. Okay, sure. Next. Here I would like to highlight one of the evaluation resources. As you can see, this is a sample evaluation form for understanding your leadership style. So like I mentioned just now, there are four purposes for you to, either one of the purposes for you to achieve. So let's say I highlighted these, these sentences, not for the evaluator. The speech may be humorous, informational, or any style the purpose chooses. So let's say if you are delivering an informative speech, Okay, I'm telling people, I'm um, discussing leadership styles in general. People may be expecting okay, it, could, it could be a very dry or boring speech. However, let's say like Mr. Bachan, he's always being a very humorous guy and he wanted to deliver this speech in a humorous style. So Mr. Bachan can use this kind of uh, his own delivery style to deliver this kind of informative speech. So in every evaluation form, you will see this kind of sentence. You can choose any of your styles that you wanted to do, which is something that you are more familiar and comfortable with. So it doesn't necessarily mean that or this is an informative speech. It is definitely very boring. Eventually, you can make it very interesting. So this is about your delivery and also your styles that you can use while you are delivering your speeches. And next... Coming to develop an outline. It's very simple. There are three things to do. Basically, you are going to tell them what you are going to tell them. And this is the introduction. Next, you will tell them what are the three main points in your speech. That is the body of the speech. And finally, you will summarize and tell them what you have told them, which is the conclusion. So I will dive in deeper in three parts of this speech, which is the opening body and also conclusion. Uh, you can stop me anytime if you think that I spoke too fast. Okay, so next, beginning of the speech. The beginning of the speech is very important because you have to grab the audience attention and make people be interested in your speech. So here are four criterias to have a successful speech opening. First of all, get the attention of the audience. Sometimes we have so many speakers in the meeting and people get tired, even in a contest. After listening to so many speeches, judges get tired. So try your best to get the attention of the audience just at the beginning and refocus them back to your speech. Second, introduce a topic. The beginning of your speech should indicate what you are going to tell the audience and also why they should be interested in your topic. So when the listener 
interested in your topic and they think that they will benefit from your sharing, they will immediately pay attention to your sharing. And the next quite, uh, successful opening would be to establish rapport with the audience. Of course, when you're beginning your speech, establish a common ground rapport with the audience because you, you need to show interest that you are um, obsessed with the topic that you are going to share. And also you can show your enthusiasm, your energy, and also make eye contact with the audience. And finally, this is my personal practice. And I personally felt that the introduction should be short, sweet, and direct and take less than 5 to 10% of the entire speech time. If let's say a seven minute speech, I think that the introduction should be less than one minute. So I always keep it to 40, 40 seconds. So keep it more time for your body of the speech. So that is my personal practice. And next, I'm going to share with you a few techniques on how to do your opening. So first one, very simple, just state the importance of your topic. Tell your listeners why the topic is important to them. For example, um, over overexposure to the sun may cause skin cancer. So it's very important for us to protect ourselves from the rays of the sun. Very simple. Set the importance of the topic. Second, make a starting statement. Instead of you just telling that smoking cause bad health to people or uh, smoking is bad, make a starting statement saying that smoking kills maybe how many percent of Malaysians um, were killed due to smoking in the year 2020 and people will be interested in your topic. And next, tell a story or anecdote some people might think that their story may have to come in the middle of the speech. However, sometimes you could also just start your speech just at the beginning by telling a story. Let's take an example from Ma's speech in the humorous speech contest. If I would want to use this as an example, I would say something like, 17 years ago, I went to the hospital. It was one fine day. I went to the hospital for my regular checkup. And that day became the day that I will never ever forget. I was diagnosed with leukemia. And you continue with the rest of your story. You can just start your speech with a story or anecdote to arouse the audience's interest. Next, you could also ask rhetorical question or thought-provoking question. So if you want to ask open-ended question or closed-ended question, personally, I prefer closed-ended because audience can only answer yes or no. But if you ask, uh, if you ask an open-ended question and you will be expecting people will be answering and it will take some time of your speech, maybe a 10 seconds for audience to respond or to answer your question or you ask an uh, open-ended question, however, you do not expect an answer from the audience and you pause and move on. That's one way for you to start your speech by asking questions. And also you can start your speech with a thought-provoking question to make people think and reflect about their own, about, about, about themselves. For example, uh, let's say, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever been in a situation where you do not know what to do in your life. And people start to think or reflect on their own personal experiences. So that is a thought-provoking question. And next, I will talk about quotation. You can also begin your speech with a quotation. A quotation can add authority to a speech can amuse the audience, can dramatize a speech point. For example, a speech in the level two, understanding your leadership style, you are going to talk about leadership. So you could start your speech by saying a quote by a famous person, for example, Dwight D. Eisenhower. 
the 24th United States president once said, leadership is about blah, 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 blah. Begin with a quotation. Next, reference to the occasion, like I mentioned just now, when you move on to level three onwards, there are certain speeches like what Daniel did is a social speeches, like you are going to give a toast at a wedding or a special occasion or acceptance speech receiving an award, you will need to address the occasion that you are doing this speech. Like today, uh, thank you so much for the organizing team for giving me this award, something as such, because you are referring to the occasion. And finally, would be some other techniques that I mentioned, just uh, some other techniques that you can also include in your speech would be humor. So I'm sure that many of you have seen how those humorous speakers, they start their speech by just one line joke or two to three sentences to build up, to create a laughter just at the beginning. The reason behind it is because the speaker wants to make the audience feel relaxed and get ready for them to laugh for the rest of the speech. So that's why they begin their joke with, uh, begin their speech with a uh, humor, one sentence joke. And if you are taking the humorous, uh, engaging humor pathway, it's also a good way for you to start your speech with humor. Next, audience participation. I believe that you have seen some speakers that tend to ask people to imagine a scene that you are in a paddy field. Imagine something or raise your hand if you like chocolate, audience participation, or do certain gestures. And a demonstration, let's say you are going to demonstrate something and you are going to deliver informative speech, you can also say, uh, do a demonstration, starting with an action. And finally, a reference to a historical event, let's say you are going to talk about something that happened in the past, you can just directly start your speech in 1929. So these are some of the techniques that you could use in your beginning. As I have said, there are numerous ways you could start by telling a story, start with humor, quotation, thought-provoking question, demonstration. So all these are the techniques that you could use in order to make your opening to grab the attention of the audience and make them feel interested in your speech. So... Give me a thumbs up once again if you are clear about this section. Great, thank you for your response. So here are some of the things that you should avoid in your opening. First thing first, avoid acknowledging the amount of preparation. Some people tend to be nervous. Okay, I, I really didn't prepare or I spent two weeks in researching the importance of sleep. You do not have to do that, it's redundant. Second, avoid being dull and boring. If you come to the stage and say, today, I'm going to talk about the importance of sleep. For me, this is considered a not so interesting opening. And third, avoid delaying mention the topic. Some people, they tend to drop a very long-winded and beating around the bush in the introduction. So avoid delaying the mention of the topic and just have a very direct and straightforward opening. And finally, avoid mentioning the purpose statements because fellow new members and our members, our Toastmaster of the evening and also the evaluator will know the purpose statement of the speech and he will know whether you fulfill the criteria being requested. So you, don't, you do not have to explain to the members like what topic you choose or do not have to mention what is the purpose statement of the project. So that's all. Uh, that's all that all the things that you need to avoid in your introduction. And I have already completed with my opening and I shall now move on with the speech body. So now coming to the speech body, we are talking about organizing your ideas and thoughts. So I'm going to introduce to you a few um, ways to organize your thoughts and ideas in your speech body. First of all, 
choose your main ideas. I know that you have lots of information that you wanted to share, but I will recommend you to just choose three main ideas, the most important and most prominent one to share in your speech. So aim for three main ideas to be well developed into three main paragraphs. And of course, in when you are elaborating these three main ideas, remember to support your ideas with supporting materials and details. So even if you are going to tell a narrative story, just like Mars did, I would also suggest three stories because all these three stories eventually support one core message, which Mars told us that life is a test. So it ties up together to just one core message at the conclusion. So choose three main ideas, even if it's an informative speech or a, a narrative story to inspire people, choose three. And next, here are a few ways for you to organize your thoughts. And I believe that some of the techniques that you are already currently using. So it's just a, like kind of a reminder. So first one would be a topical pattern to organize your thoughts. It means that you create categories or chunks of information that go together to help support your original purpose. So let's say this speech today, you are going to inform your audience about the uses and misuses of internet dating. So my purpose is to inform. So what am I going to include in my speech? I, I have a few chunks of information, which the first one I will be defining and describe the current internet dating. What are the current phenomenon or statistics of Malaysians using internet dating? And moving on, I will explain some of the strategies to enhance audience internet dating experience. And the third point I would like to elaborate will be, I will list some of the warning signs to look for in potential online dates. So these are the three main ideas which I felt it will be effective to inform my group of audience about internet dating. So that's how I craft my speech in a topical pattern. So next, cause and effect. Uh, I think most of you must be familiar with this. Like for example, cause of pollution. Let's say you are doing a research and presenting speech in level one. What are the cause of pollution? And what are the effects to the human, to animals, or to the nature? So these three are the main points of your speech, cause and effect. So it's good to explain how an event unfolded. So it's either you move from cause to effect or to effect to cause. Next would be problem and solution pattern. This is quite similar to the cause and effect, but there is a slight difference on the approach. For me, problem and solution is more suitable for informative or persuasive speech. So let's say if you are going to persuade people to accept a viewpoint of yours, you are going to show the problem and also to lay out what are the solutions. And in the cause and effect, there is no solution being provided. However, in this method, you lay out the problem and you, uh, you show the problem and you also lay out the solution to the audience. So that's about problem and solution. And the next one will be chronological order, which is also same as the time sequence pattern. So if you are trying to deliver a speech to describe a process, of course, it will be in a chronological order, step one, two, three, four, five. And if you are also telling a narrative story, just like Mars did, it follows a timeline in his life. So you tell a story, you make a point, and you move on to tell another story, you make another point, you tell the third story, and you make another point. And finally, you make a memorable conclusion which ties all these three stories to support the core message. So this is a chronological order which is suitable for uh, informative speech that describe process or when you are going to deliver a narrative story. And so I have already discussed and also shared with you about the four that I have mentioned just now, which is the topical pattern. The second one is the cause and effect. The third one would be the problem and solution pattern. The fourth one would be chronological order. 
Next, when you are trying to elaborate further in your speech body, you have to offer relevant support to support uh, offer relevant support to your ideas. So such as you can include facts, statistic, let's say an informative speech, your uh, examples to elaborate further, personal stories or experience regarding that topic, your reasons, your quotes, you not only include quotes in the beginning, you can also include quotes in your body of the speech. And finally, you could also make some comparison and contrast. So this is the um, providing supporting material and details to your speech. And next, in order to make your speech flow, you need transition words. As most of the speaker, we are talking, uh, evaluators, we are looking at the transitioning of the speech. So it's important for you to insert some of the transition words so that the main, the one idea is linked to the another idea. So some of the transition words, as you know, in addition, uh, especially moving on, first, second, third. So these are the transition words. And ladies and gentlemen, this is something that I would really love to share with you. And I found that all these are a great elements to make your speech from a good speech to a great speech. Pay attention. And that's also something that I'm still learning at the moment. So first thing first, authenticity. When I talk about authenticity here, I mean making your story personal. Incorporating your own personal stories can eventually help you to paint a picture and also to build a rapport with your audience because you are opening up yourself and telling people about yourself. Your personal story is 100% unique. And I can tell you that most people, even I myself, I love to hear stories. So try to think of the stories that you can incorporate in between your speech. And second, emotions. Remember, people will not remember what you said. People will not remember what you did. But people will always remember what you made them feel. So include emotions in your speech. If you, your speech can move people, can make people cry, happy, excited, or even inspired, you are delivering emotions in your speech. So include emotive language, and this language is going to place on the audience attention. And at the same time, you make them feel all kinds of emotions, like feeling sad, feeling passionate about the topic. I have seen maybe um, one speech that I heard before and he talked about his successful accomplishment in his life and he only focused on the good side. However, for me, it doesn't appeal to me because I would love to hear more of his emotion on how he overcome his struggles, how he overcome the obstacles and how he became this successful. So share more of your emotions and this is, the great point where you can be connected to your audience. And the third one would be humor. Like I mentioned just now, people love to be entertained. They love to laugh. So if you have the ability, because humor is something that not really as a born talent. However, you could learn how to incorporate some punchline or jokes in your speech to create the humor and inject the humor to make your speech to be more interesting. And finally, this is the element to be a great speech is about descriptive language. What do I mean here by descriptive language? Meaning that this kind of language can help people to visualize to describe, to define, or to explain information about people, places, things, situations, or even actions. So what you can do in order for you to add descriptive language in your speech is you can add adjective, adverbs, simile, or metaphor. So I'm going to give you a few um, examples on simile. So you can do your further research on these two terms. 
I, I believe that everyone is already familiar with adjective and adverb. However, uh, simile and metaphor is something that you could add to your speech. Simile is something that you create a comparison using like and as. For example, the boy sat as quiet as a mouse during the movie. Or you are referring life without love. It's like a tree without blossoms or fruit. And metaphor is you say that one thing is another thing. You are referring her eyes were like the sparkling stars in the sky. And her tears were a river flowing down her cheeks. So you can see here, instead of you just telling that she is crying a lot, this is a very simple expression to talk about people is crying. You can say that she's really crying a lot and you rephrase it using a metaphor saying that her tears were a river flowing down her cheeks. It makes people able to imagine the level of sadness this person is currently facing. So that is about being descriptive in your language and this is also something that you can think of when you are writing your speech instead of giving very normal sentences try to make it more descriptive to paint a picture in listeners mind so once again show me a thumbs up if you understand until this part great thank you thank you for your response next now i'm coming to the conclusion so I'm sure that many of you have seen people end their speech abruptly without proper conclusion. And it's just like you are watching a very wonderful movie and it suddenly ends with a very lousy ending. So your conclusion contributes to the success of your speech is because remember that what you said last, last with your audience. People will remember your conclusion better compared to any other part of a speech as compared to your introduction or even your body of the speech. So put in more effort in your conclusion and make your conclusion to be a very impactful and powerful one. So criteria for a successful conclusion. First thing, you have to achieve a sense of conclusion because you know that you are signaling people you are already reaching the end of the speech and you want people to pay attention to your final call message because we always structure our call message just at the conclusion so you want people to pay attention to it to listen to your final words to so achieve a sense of a closure and you will say something like in conclusion or in summary all in all or let me end my speech by this quote people will be alert and knowing that you are already reaching a conclusion. Second, make an impact. Of course, if your conclusion is powerful enough, you will make a long-lasting impression to the audience because I believe that you have been in Toastmasters for years and you can only remember a few speeches because I can only remember a few speeches in my mind because I remember the conclusion and also the emotional impact that the speech had given to me. So that's the powerful of a uh, conclusion. And I also recommend everyone to take 5 to 10% of the entire speech time to draft your conclusion because I also felt that make it short, sweet, and direct at your conclusion. And now also a few techniques for you to craft your conclusion. Like I mentioned just now, you could start with a quote and you could insert quotes in the body of the speech. And of course, you could also end your speech with any quotation by famous people or from a movie. Next, call to action. Call to action meaning that if let's say your speech has a very clear purpose that you are persuading people to be vaccinated as soon as possible, just like what Mr. Benka did. And the call to action for the speech is to urge people to do certain action after listening to your speech. So that is your call to action at the conclusion. Explain clearly what are the actions that the audience should take. And you could also ask a rhetorical question. It could be any question that you can make people think 
and reflect. Sometimes I have seen some speakers that end with a very powerful question and I was thinking also reflecting that question after even after the meeting ended. So that's a that's the powerful of the conclusion by asking a question. And also a very simple one, summarize your main point. For example, all in all, the three benefits of vaccine are one, two, three. Summarize your main point, repetition reinforce your message. It will also enhance your audience learning just at the conclusion when you rephrase and reorganize your main ideas in your conclusion. So I have shared with you a few techniques to close your speech. And here are a few tips to do a successful conclusion. Remember that it's very important what you said last, last with your audience. So memorize your conclusion. It's very important. Make sure that you are really very familiar with the conclusion. And end on time, just make it short and sweet. And finally, refrain from adding new points to your speech. Just summarize and do not add any new points to your speech. So that's, uh, that's until the conclusion part, and I still have some other uh, slides to mention. But until right now, are you guys clear about what am I presenting? And do give me a thumbs up once again. And let me see some response. Okay, great. Thank you, Mas, Yong Li, Nancy. Kairu, Agilan, Ian. Okay, so I have already talked to you, share with you about the ways to craft your opening, what to do in your body of the speech, and also a few techniques to draft your conclusion. So I guess everyone should have a very clear idea on how to do your future speeches. And now this is uh, additional knowledge that I wanted to share with you guys, which is regarding selecting a topic. Because in your level one until level five, there are numerous speeches and some speeches, they come with a very specific topic. Like for example, the level two, understanding your leadership style. You definitely know that you are going to talk about leadership styles and not any other topics. But however, there are certain speech that do not really clearly uh, define what you are going to talk about. And I have... Um, screenshot one of the level three and you can see there are some of the speeches here as in connect with storytelling or connect with your audience and inspire your audience or you see there is a very interesting project about using descriptive language like i mentioned just now in this particular project you will learn how do you use those descriptive language to paint a picture in listeners mind so i really look forward some of the members could attempt this project in the future and also effective body language so all these topics you are free to select any topic that you are going to give so i would like to share with you a very simple one how do you choose a topic if you are free to do any selection first of all like i mentioned people love to hear stories you can share about your interests like carol or premier a uh, previous member carol shared something about photography in her pathway projects. You can share about your career, your family life, your marriage life, and your education level, something that happened in your primary school, secondary school, etc. And if, let's say, you are someone that is not really comfortable in sharing your all your life experiences and your personal stories, you can also use reference material. Okay, so here are a few reference material that you can look for websites. So when you browse through uh, websites, you, you saw something that sparked your interest, you could use it as a speech topic. And books they have read recently, let's say you read a book about atomic habits, you could do your research and presenting about humans' habits or even magazines and newspaper, something that happened recently and you are interested to talk about it. So here are a few reference bacteria that you can uh, look for if you want to choose a topic for your upcoming speeches. And finally, I have seen lots of speakers, great speakers, they're giving us advice that do keep a journal with you. And if you, because ideas are everywhere, if you 
have certain ideas and you get inspired by certain things that happens around you, just write it down and it could be a very great speech topic in the future. So when you get inspired by any ideas, just write it down. And finally, as a conclusion, selecting a speech topic when you are free to select any topic, it comes with these three um, criteria. Combining your personal experience plus your resources that you can look online and also consideration. Consideration means that um, are you really interested to talk about this topic? Are you credible enough? Are you an authority to talk about this topic? And combining these three, you will deliver a very wonderful speech topic. So that's about selecting a topic. And do give me a love shape if you know and understood about selecting a topic. Yes, great. Thank you. Now, let's come to something more serious. And as an evaluator, as you all know that we, as a member of Toastmasters, most of the time we are a speaker. We are also an evaluator. And sometimes you are audience. So I would like to focus on what the evaluator is actually looking for in your speech. And when you are drafting your speech, you also not only, not only you think from the audience perspective, what the audience is expecting from you, but you also think from the evaluator perspective, what is the evaluator expecting from you? So hereby, I would like to reveal to you what I expect from you if I am an evaluator. So first of all, of course, as you know, we evaluate on your delivery style, but I'm not going to further elaborate on your delivery style, such as the uh, vocal variety, your body language, your hand gestures, your eye contact. No, those are the basics. However, I will look deeper to look at your structure of the speech. Whether is it really organized? Are your thoughts and your ideas organized? Second would be the chronology of the plot. Does it make sense to me? Does it sound logical? I'm, I'm sure that some of you have seen some speeches that at the end of the conclusion, you still have no idea what the speaker is talking about. So make sure that your speech is clear and logic. And it's a transition move. And Set up of the climax. So let's say if you are delivering an inspirational speech or narrative story, I, as an evaluator, I'm expecting a climax of the story. Let's say, for example, you're talking about you were a naughty boy when you were young and you turn over a new leaf and become a good person. But what happened in between that made you have such a huge change? And that is the climax of the story. And I would like to hear from that. I would like to hear more about your stories or what inspired you to make the change. And that is the climax of the story. And emotional impact. Of course, if you as a great speaker, if you successfully make me feel that I am on an emotional roller coaster ride while listening to your speech, then you are a successful speaker. So try to play around with audience emotions and insert more emotions in your speech and think about what are the emotional impact that you could bring to the evaluator and the audience. The next will be completeness and coherence. Coherence here, I'm talking about the flow of thoughts. The three main ideas that you inserted in your speech, are they interrelated? Are they interconnected? And are all these three ideas lead to your core message? And is your core message ties in together with your introduction? That's what I talk about coherence. I'm, I have seen speeches that, um, and they give speeches like those ideas, they are like separate chunks of information that to me that they are not really related to each other. So make sure that your ideas are coherent. 
And completeness, I'm talking about uh, maybe let's say you are giving a narrative story. However, your speech lack of a climax for me is no longer a complete speech because it lack of a most important criteria, which is the climax of the speech. Uh, let's take an, another example talking about, uh, I, have, I have heard a speech talking about she is referring her lie to a plate of nasi lemak. And in the body of the speech, she talk about the process of learning how to make a dish, how to make a plate of nasi lemak. However, at the conclusion, he, she doesn't really relate lie and the plate of nasi lemak. For me, it just doesn't make sense. It's not logic and it's not a complete speech. So try to think of this perspective and ask yourself, is my speech logic? Is my speech make sense? Is my speech complete? And is my speech ideas coherent to each other? And finally, the two take-home message and also the call to action that I mentioned just now, what is the thing that you wanted to deliver to your audience? What do you want them to do? What do you want them to feel after listening to your speech? So this is something that you can ask yourself when you are writing a speech. And this is also something that you can look for when you are an evaluator in our club meeting. All right, so do not have to jot this down because I'm going to share this slide to everyone afterwards. So just focus on listening to me. And finally, uh, before I do a final conclusion, is everyone clear about this slide on what evaluator is looking for in your speech? Show me a thumbs up. Great, thank you. So finally, as a conclusion, so I have already talked about various points to craft your speech from the beginning to the end. And I also talk about uh, what evaluators is looking for in your speech. And finally, I would like to end my presentation with our Toastmasters value. Everything that we do in Toastmasters, we align ourselves to the Toastmasters value, which is the four, respect, integrity, excellence, and service. Uh, like our past president, Awi, once said that if you want, when you want to deliver a speech, you need people to serve as the role players. You need seven people to serve as the role players in order for you to deliver a speech. So that's why we have to make sure that we always deliver our best. And respect, we talk about we respect ourselves as a speaker and we respect others. So that's why we refrain from talking about those sensitive topics like sex, politics, and religious. That's something about respect. Integrity and excellence. Why I want to mention integrity and excellence here is because as you know that in the rule book, there is a rule stating that if a speech if a speech by a contestant exceeds a 25% of the plagiarism, meaning that he copied 25% um, from other people's speeches, and he or she, the contestant, will be disqualified as a contestant. So that's why it means that Toastmasters International, they are also seeking for originality and also creativity. And believe me, everyone here, you are a great speaker, and everyone here is able to craft a wonderful speech and a unique speech. So you do not have to like um, copy or to ref um, copy other people's speech. You can refer, you can refer, you can emulate, but you do not copy. Because I believe that there are some other speeches, Toastmasters, that will be sharing their uh, sample speeches online. And I believe that. Um, everyone could have found it online and you can refer to it. However, let's say if you found a speech which is by a world champion and you find it very interesting, what you can learn, you can learn the structure, how the world champion craft the stories, how she craft the opening or conclusion, you can refer. However, you do not really copy the sentences that the world champion used in that particular speech. You can rephrase and you can implement in your speech. So that's why we talk about integrity right here in, in crafting your speech. Although it's not only applies in the context, however, I think it applies in our uh, daily practice when we deliver speeches in 
Toastmasters meeting. And finally, excellence. As you know, we all want to be a great speaker, better communicator. So always treat your speech as if you are going to an international speech or international stage. Always put in your best effort to craft your speech and you will eventually see your own improvement. So that's why whatever we do in Toastmasters, we align to our Toastmasters values, respect, integrity, excellence, and service. So that's all about my presentation for today. I, is there any question that you wanted to ask? You may open your mic and we shall have a discussion. And that's all for my presentation for today. Back to Ian. Hi, Amber. I have a question. Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah. And Daniel here. Okay. Uh, do we? Uh, do you actually encourage us to use props in our speaking? How yes, about the I. Mm. Okay. Thank you for the question. I do encourage. Uh, you. I do encourage speaker to use prop. However, if let's say that prop is really very important in your speech, okay, like. Uh, in the past area context, I talk, there's a speaker that you have seen. He's, she is talking about mirror of change, and she's using the mirror as an analogy to uh, make choices in our life. And that mirror acts as a very important prop in her speech. If that prop plays such an important role in your speech, I would suggest you to use it. But let's say if it's just a very simple one line sentence i pick up my phone uh, it's not necessary for you to use prop that's my opinion about using prop provided it is a very important portion of the speech all right thank you i have another question also mm, yes. okay how about using a poetry or poem um, because in a BM, uh, Toastmasters, sometimes in a, in a speech, they will use uh, Pantone, Pius, uh, uh, what is that, Pantone, and uh, Peribasa, Ponchodo, Bilang, and these kind of things. How about in English? How we can enhance our, you know, our script much more better, something like that? Yeah. Mm, okay. Because personally, I also realize this pattern in BM clubs, but however, I believe that all of us, we have seen so many speeches in English and we can see that the norms is that most people, we do not have this kind of practice of using this poem or poetry in our speech. But let's say if you think that it doesn't really occupy much time, or let's say maybe just uh, 30 seconds, if you think that it's important for you, I think you can use it. You are fine to use it. But let's say if this poem doesn't really carry any meaning to enhance my call message, I wouldn't recommend you to use in your speech. Yeah, there's something uh, Aguilar mentioned in the Zoom is similar to a quote. It, it, it depends on whether it helps to support your core message. Because as you know, in a seven-minute speech, you can only craft around 700 to 850 words. So try to utilize the words because you are unable to um, include all those unnecessary points in your speech. Try to be precise. Thank you. Is there any other question? Because um, um, averagely, people talk about 100 and 150 words per minute. So if you're going to deliver a seven-minute speech, so you can times 
uh, let's say 120 times 7 and you get around 700 plus. So let's say while you are writing your speech, your speech already exceeds 900, 1000. You definitely have to reduce the speech first before you move on with your practice. So remember that 7 minute speech is around 700 to 800 something. So if you are delivering longer speeches, let's say a uh, level 5, level 4 project, like 18 to 20 minutes, then your time is equally to the number of words that you can speak in one minute. Also applies to the social speech, which is only 2 to 3 minutes. That's all. Yeah, thank you.